Shalom. That's uh, your brother, Yura. Uh, giving all praise to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachach Um I have another article here, a major article. Um, this is more on uh, the Cash of Society and the Mark of the Beast. And uh, there's this lady, Whitney Webb, that, that basically broke the story. But this is going into what uh, everyone has probably heard of, which is the Mark of the Beast. And so Revelation 13 and 16, so I'll just get this first. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their foreheads, and that no man may buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And that part that no man may buy or sell is a lot of what this article is going to go into. Um, so it says uh, how the national security state is using coronavirus to push AI driven mass surveillance. But the key thing in this article here is not just the surveillance. It's uh, that entire system that they're trying to do. Um, and it says... Uh, underneath that headline, it says last year, a government commission called for the U.S. to adopt an AI driven mass surveillance system far beyond that used in any other country. Now, many of the obstacles cited as preventing its implementation are being removed under the guise of, com of combating coronavirus. And so uh, it says last year, a U.S. government body detected. Uh, dedicated Salakia, a U.S. government body dedicated to examining how artificial intelligence can, quote, address the national security and defense needs of the United States, discussed in detail the structural changes that the econ American economy and society must undergo in order to ensure a technological advantage over China. According to a recent document acquired through a FOIA request, which is a uh, Freedom of Information Act, where, you know, basically, you know, in, any uh, American citizen should be able to request this and the government's supposed to release any information, but we, we all know they're, they're only going to give you what they're going to give you. Um, but uh, the person who did this article managed to get this information out because uh, this document suggests that the U.S. following China's lead and even surpassed in many aspects related to the AI-driven technologies, particularly their use of mass surveillance. This perspective clearly clashes with the public rhetoric of prominent U.S. government officials and pol politicians on China who have labeled the Chinese government's technology investments and export of its surveillance systems and other technologies as a major threat to Americans' way of life. Um, it says, in addition, many of the steps by the implementation of such a program in the U.S. as laid out in this newly available document uh, are currently being promoted and implemented as part of the government's response to the current coronavirus COVID-19 crisis. Uh, this is likely due to the fact that many members of the same body have considerable overlap with the task force and advisors currently guiding the government's plans to reopen the economy and efforts to use technology to respond to the current crisis. So it's basically telling you that these elites would sit on these multiple boards, uh, the, the people that sit on uh, this organization that's organizing this, this AI development is also the same people on the task force for, you know, reopening the economy in, the corona, in this coronavirus cr uh, crisis, which is basically all bullshit. Uh, and it's just a ploy to get people off the U.S. dollar and to get total control of the economy. Um, next paragraph says the FOIA document obtained by the Electronic Privacy Information Center, or EPIC, was produced by a little-known U.S. government organization called National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence. And that's that department that, uh, that they had just created, uh, I believe it says in 2018, yeah, it was created uh, by the 2018 National Defense Authorization Act, and its official purpose is to consider the methods and means 
necessary to advance the development of artificial intelligence. Because Esau wants to be God. He wants complete and he's he's a psychopath. You know, he wants complete and utter control over everybody. Uh, it says machine learning and associated technologies to comprehensively address the national security defense needs of the United States. Um, now, this article is pretty long. I would highly recommend reading the whole thing, but I'll just uh, skip down. Um, it says targeting China's adoption advantage because China's already got this system on lock, you know, and China's a major percentage of the global population. Um, so under this open questions for the future of technology, this paragraph here says chief among the troublesome, uh, quote, structural factors says highlighted in this presentation are so-called legacy systems. Uh, that are common in the U.S., but less so in China. Um, the NSCAI document states that examples of legacy systems include a financial system that still utilizes cash and card payments. So that's what they're calling legacy systems, like old systems, basically, like people who are using cash, uh, you still use the cre even credit cards are considered you know, legacy or outdated now because the future that they want where everything is headed is completely integrated where you can't, you can't uh, go without being tracked. There were five G towers everywhere within range of every person and every human. Um, it, man, what, what a nightmare this place is. This place continues, man. Jeez. Uh, and it says, uh, Legacy systems include a financial system that utilizes cash and car payments, individual car ownership, and even receiving medical attention from a human doctor. So they don't want, they want driverless cars. They want robot cars driving you around so they know where, where you're going, where you're driving. They want human doctors, you know. They, they don't want human doctors. They want robots, you know, to take over. Um, and, and they don't want uh, people using cash, definitely. Um, it states that while these legacy systems in the U.S. are good enough, too many good enough systems hinder the adoption of new things, which is the mark beast, which is the RFID chip that's, that we all know is coming, uh, specifically AI-driven systems. Another structural factor deemed by the NSCAI to be an obstacle to the U.S.'s ability to maintain a technological advantage over China is the scale of consumer market, arguing that extreme urban density equals on-demand service adoptions. So they want everybody congregated together in cities like New York and uh, and L.A., a lot of Chinese cities. It's, you know, it's 8 million people, 10 million people, 5 million people, a very dense population, which is better for machine learning because there's more people, there's, there's a bigger data set uh, for them to go on. Um, uh, so in other words, extreme urbanization results in more people using online mobile based on demand services ranging from ride sharing to online shopping. So they want you to do everything online. They want you to track which ride, where you're going at all times. Uh, it also cites the use of mass surveillance on China's huge population base is an example of how China's scale of consumer market advantage allowing uh, China to leap ahead in the fields of related technologies like facial recognition. And nobody's asking, like, why do you even want this? Why do you even want to live in a world where, you know, somebody you don't know knows every single thing about you and is just tracking you, you know? Um, but it's coming. So I'll skip down to this last, uh, this last part here. Well, it actually goes longer than that, but this is the main point. And then, uh, you brothers can read the rest on your own. Uh, I'll read. Yeah, I'll read to this. These next few paragraphs, it says what will replace America's legacy systems. So they want these legacy systems like cars and credit cards and cash to be replaced. It says given that the document makes it quite clear that legacy systems in the U.S. are impeding its ability to prevent China from leapfrogging ahead in AI and then dominating it for the foreseeable future. It is also important to examine what documents suggest should replace these legacy systems in the U.S. As previously mentioned, one legacy system cited early on in the presentation 
is the main means of payment for most Americans. Cash and credit slash debit cards. So that's the main thing. That's the main hurdle that they're saying is, is stopping them from accomplishing their goal. Says so the presentation asserts and contrast to these legacy systems that the best and most advanced system is moving entirely to a smartphone based digital wallets. Bam, there it is, Catholic society. And they're actively working on this right now in this coronavirus crisis. Uh, it knows specifically the main mobile wallet provider in India, uh, Paytm is majority owned by Chinese companies. It quotes in an article which states that a big break came in 2016 when India canceled 86% of its currency in circulation in an effort to cut corruption and bring more people into the tax net by forcing them to use less cash. And that's exactly what America is about to do. They're about to cancel this currency and follow suit just like India did. And uh, if, you, if you notice, China and India, which together is just those two countries, represent about half of the world's population alone in just those two countries. You know, I think there's I think there's about two billion people in India and almost almost two billion people in China. And. Uh, and both of them are already in digital wallets and digital currencies. So and China and, and China owns the major company that is uh, supporting this uh, digital wallet currency. Um, it says, uh, at the time, claims that India's 2016 currency reform would be used as a stepping stone towards a cashless society, which, sorry, were, di were dismissed by some as conspiracy theory. However, last year, a committee convened by India's central bank and led by an Indian tech oligarch who also created India's massive civilian biometric database, there you go, biometric database, um resulted in the Indian government's cashless India program. So they 100% and, and just so you know, every time you see a central bank of a country like India, it's, it all goes back to the Fed, the, the Federal Reserve Central Bank. They, they all have to convert their currencies to the U.S. dollar. So they're, they're all under them financially or, or subjected to them financially. So it's only a matter of time uh, before America sees the same quote unquote currency reform. Uh, so it says, uh, regarding India's 2016 currency reform, the NSCAI document then asserts that this would be unfathomable in the West. And that's true because a lot of even Edomites are going to buck up against this. They're going to be like, hey, what? you know, I'm not taking the chip. I'm not, you know, I'm using cash, blah, 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 blah. Like there's more guns in America than there are people. So when the so-called shit hits the fan, it's going to get fucking nasty out here. Um, it says, and unsurprisingly, when 86% of the cash got canceled and nobody had a credit card, mobile wallets in India exploded, laying the groundwork for a far more advanced payments ecosystem in India than the U.S. So when they canceled the currency here in America, which that's coming, which I, I don't really see the U.S. dollar really making it past this year. I'd be shocked if the U.S. dollar is still the global reserve currency by the end of 2020. You know, uh, we'll we'll have to see. We'll see. Um, however, it has become increasingly less fathomable, unfathomable in the light of the current coronavirus crisis, which has seen efforts to reduce the amount of cash used because paper bills may carry the virus, as well as efforts to introduce a Federal Reserve backed digital dollar. <laughs> so there it is, uh, brothers, you know. I just wanted to share this article uh, pursuant to Revelation 13 that, uh, you know, what John the Revelator saw, man, he literally saw this 2,000 years ago. And, you know, it's a little bit surreal just seeing it all unfold, you know, uh, in front of your very eyes. But there it is, you know, they're using the using of cash as a carrier for transmitting the virus. All Every excuse in the book is going to get people... To, to take hold of that dollar. So, you know, there's a lot of, I hear a lot of brothers saying it's the vaccine is going to lead to it. And then 
That's going to be step one, I think, to scare people and get them afraid. And then this digital dollar is going to be next. They're going to force all your money in your account right now. It's all going to be converted. You're not going to be able to buy anything except you have the new, what they call Federal Reserve backed digital dollar. Um, and then and and then once that then once that's to happen, the vast majority of people, even the people who are not with it, they're going to take. They're going to take the RFID chip uh, because Esau is trying to develop AI because he wants to, he wants every scrap of information on us because he wants total control. Um, so anyway, you guys can read the rest of this article. Uh, it was really good. It just they just released this. I'm pretty sure. And uh, yeah, man, uh, the kingdom's almost here, man. Call hello, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem. And uh, Lord willing, you know, you brothers of the elect, y'all stay prayed up. And uh, Yahweh Shah's on his way, man. Shalom.